Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a This Year in Perfume and we're all the way up to the year 2015. Now, I will tell you, it is the end of September in Texas and I kind of had a shit day today. Woke up and got in my car and it said low engine coolant and I went, oh no, I hope this doesn't cost me an arm and a leg. I just topped it off and we'll deal with it later. Uh, even through all that and a long work day, it was a fantastic day. You know why? Because the first time uh, of the fall, which it's basically fall today. I think today technically is the first day of fall, but other people get colder weather much quicker than, than we do. And I'll tell you what I was happy about. When I woke up this morning, it was in the low 60s, which is just amazing for us here in Texas. I love days like that. I cherish them because you never know when it's going to be 90 again. So it was a great day. And I decided to do this 2015 video and I realized just how many fragrances there are in my collection from 2015. Apparently it was a big year. So let's get on it. Let us begin the begin, if you will. Um, so let's start. I'm going to skip Scent of the Day because Scent of the Day actually is a 2015 release. And I uh, am going to do some samples first and some samples that are on the list to discuss, and some we have talked about in the past. The first one is a fragrance I still haven't smelled. I've had this decant for years. I haven't just gotten around to it. I will do an early impression on it. Probably won't make it my scent of the day because it's a sweet floral fragrance that might not really be my thing, uh, but it's from the house of Killian, and it's uh, Voilez-vous coucher avec moi, which um, is a ridiculous name, but whatever. There you go. So I got this Lucky Scent sample, which I'm pretty sure all of my Lucky Scent samples were sent to me for free. I know I heard some channels discussing how expensive it is to get samples. If you do buy stuff from Lucky Scent, they will send you free samples. So it's a good way to um, sample perfume and still get your bottles at a respectable price. I like Lucky Scent. Um, Alberto Morias made this. It's Neroli and Ylang and Tuberose and Rose uh, and apparently a little bit of Woods and Vanilla, but it's supposedly sweet, so I may not like it, but uh, we will see. I'll do an early impression on that one. And I have another early impression video or quick hit late night because I don't have very much of this, but still is very kind to the person who sent these to me. It's uh, Imaginary Authors, which I do own two full bottles from them. But the 2015 release that I have is Every Storm a Serenade. So Every Storm a Serenade is uh, this aquatic green that Josh Meyer made, who owns the brand and is also the perfumer. And apparently it's ambergris, calone, Danish spruce, which sounds like something you would eat, eucalyptus, sea mist, and vetiver. And my guess is with Calone in the list. I'm not going to care for this one enough to try to go buy a full bottle, but I will try it. I'll give everything a fair shot, including one of my most hated brands, Zerjoff's Naxos. So I've been waiting for the weather to cool to wear this. This is Zerjoff's take on Thierry Mugler's Pure Havan, which I have a vintage bottle of with the Thierry Mugler. That's the one that you want, although even the current version that just says Mugler uh, is now discontinued. L'Oreal is just, they're beyond the pale of human comprehension. I don't know what they think they're doing, uh, but they are butchering the brand of Thierry Mugler. But if you like that Amen tobacco, you know, sweet tobacco, cherry, honeyed tobacco DNA, which I love, I, I don't think I've come across an Amen flanker that I don't think is, is good so far. I love them all. Uh, I just got pure coffee, wore it to bed the other night, and I was in love with it. Uh, it's so, I love how they keep the Amen patchouli DNA and just add, you know, a, a different ingredient or two. That's what a flanker should be. That's what a flanker is. Uh, Naxos is Zerjoff copying Thierry Mugler, basically, and charging 350 bucks. It does have lavender. I have smelled it, but I will do a video. I have enough juice to make it my scent of the day. So I will wear this one day, and we'll just have a good old time talking shit about Naxos. Now, I'll give it a fair shake. I will, um, I will give it a fair shake, just like everything else. And then we're going to go to a house that I'm going to have a hard time giving a fair shake to, but I will try. It's the house of Anishio, and this is called Blessed Baraka. Now, 
Initio is the sister house of Parfums de Marly. Many people don't know that, but the, uh, the people, the brand behind those two houses, they're the same, okay? And apparently rumor is they don't like when people say that, which is even more reason for me to want to say it. Initio and Parfums de Marly are sister houses. And uh, Blessed Baraka 2015, obviously, it's a sweet woody fragrance with white blossoms, amber, musk, vanilla, and sandalwood. Sounds like I'm going to hate it, especially if it's sweet. Everything I've smelled from Initio is sweet, but again, I will give it a fair shake and give it a try. The one that I have worn before, I have given this a full wear, and I absolutely despise this fragrance. If I review this, it's going to be one of the classic hate reviews. People like those reviews sometimes. I think because on YouTube, everyone likes everything, that when you find someone that actually says what they feel about a brand and it's not positive, people are drawn to that. Plus, they probably think it's hilarious to see a perfume get bashed. Uh, this is called Absolute Aphrodisiac. My God, is this terrible. This is, oh, this is, this is like smelling uh, amber and warm milk. Okay, imagine that. Amber and warm milk. Cheap synthetic amber, too, by the way, with this disgusting white musk. They say there's castorium in here. Maybe that's the warm milk left out on the counter vibe. I've never smelled any castorium that smells like that in my lifetime, but um, when I see people rave about absolute aphrodisiac online, I just, I mean, it's, it's very hard to contain myself sometimes. Okay. Now, here is a designer fragrance that I do like. We'll do some back-to-back -back, uh, decants I have or small travel atomizers that I do like. This is John Varvatos' Dark Rebel. Now, Dark Rebel um, is a leathery, spicy um, fragrance by Rodrigo Flores Rue, who is the Givaudan perfumer who created many of um, John Varvatos' earliest works. Uh, this is Jamaican Rum. So this is a good designer boozy fragrance, by the way. If you want to smell a boozy fragrance that's a good designer, and let's say you miss the boat on something like Thierry Mugler's Pure Malt, which is probably where I would point you to if you wanted to have a designer boozy fragrance. And you can still find bottles of this for a respectable price. I've seen some floating around between 50 and 100 bucks. It's discontinued, okay? Uh, basically, when the House of John Barbados went bankrupt, El uh, Elizabeth Arden was the distributor, and what ended up happening is Revlon took over the distribution rights, and when Revlon took them over, they decided not to renew Dark Rebel or Dark Rebel Rider, for whatever reason. Either the ingredients were more expensive. It does smell more expensive to me. This smells like it could be Erosia, honestly. Same with Dark Rebel Rider. Um... There is a pure Cuban sugarcane note in here, which normally you would think I hate that. But when it's done with boozy fragrances, sometimes I like a little sweetness with something like rum where it mixes properly. Bo uh, rum and, and sugar cubes go together. And here it's done very well. There is a black leather note, but it's not as amped up as on Dark Rebel Rider, which is my favorite of the two. But that comes next year. We're in 2015 now. And there's a tobacco leaf and castorium note, and um, Mexican vanilla. And so, John Barbados Dark Rebel, good designer, discontinued, still can be had for a respectable price. Is it worth 50, 60, 70, 80 bucks? Yes. Is it worth 120, 160? No, probably not. But if you get a good deal on it, it is one to try to grab. I'm glad to have this uh, 10 ml travel atomizer. And then, probably one of the most, um, probably one of the best done uh, designer ouds, if you will. I don't know if there's real oud in here, but uh, this is called Oud Palau by Diptyque. And this is a rose oud combination. They claim they use Laotian oud, and it... It definitely feels like there could be real oud in here. I will do a full review before this travel atomizer is no more. This is uh, Laotian oud, Bulgarian rose, bourbon vanilla, Indonesian sandal uh, patchouli, sorry, Ceylonese sandalwood, Nagamatha or Cypriol, 
I did an entire video on Cipriol, if you want to go check that out. Somalian frankincense and Spanish cistus. And the frankincense is very prominent. In fact, I wore this to work a week or two ago, and my neighbor who sits next to me said, Ah, incense, huh? And I went, actually, it's oud. You know what oud is? He went, no. I said, okay, it's it's incense. Um, but uh, it does have that Cipriol, and it has that resinous cystus labdanum base, which I love. And it does last a long time. Usually, oud is a base note, okay? But what I've noticed, what I've noticed is that many of these houses, um, for example, I mentioned in the past, Rania J's, Assam Oud, or Oud Assam, I forget which one. And I just did a video on Emwaj Silver Oud, which I love. That's Opus 13. I really want a bottle of that, but I don't want to spend my money on it. Um, basically, I'm, I'm trying to be a little bit more frugal, uh, especially with inflation biting. And so, um, you know, what I was going to say with the Oud is I've noticed many of these houses... You get an oud top note, and then it disappears. So it's like they build a fragrance around woods and oriental notes, like the cystus labdanum, Spanish cystus. And uh, they kind of just stick a little bit of oud in the top. And so what happens is you get the oud in the early parts of the fragrance, the first 30 minutes, an hour, and then it just dives into the rest of the fragrance. The oud is gone. You notice it with oud palau. Oud palau, the first hour, it's very oudy. Uh, and then it's gone. Whereas if you take a proper oud fragrance, like a Russian Adam or a Bortnikov, right? The oud is in the base. It's when you get to the dry down that the oud really, really comes out and shines <clears throat> many times. Sometimes you get oud in the top too, but um, I, I found these designer houses. Uh, I noticed it with silver, silver oud. Go watch my review of silver oud. You'll notice I say the oud is very prominent in the early parts of the top and maybe the very beginning of the mid, but then as it dries down, it tends to go towards the smoke and the darker notes and the woods and stuff like that. And so it's it's a trend I'm noticing. They want to give you the feel of real oud, but they don't want to spend the money on making the ingredients hefty enough to where the oud is going to last throughout the base. And so it's still a good fragrance. If you're going to, if you wanted a you know, Western Oud, designer Oud, and you wanted something realistic, this is probably one of the ones I would recommend. And this is not expensive. You can get a bottle of this at discounters for a little over a hundred bucks. Okay, next we're going to go to Tom Ford and probably one of their most popular men's fragrance. In fact, um, Parfumo shows this as the number 12th most popular men's fragrance right now, period, in, in, on, on, you know, end of September 2022. Pretty impressive since this came out in 2015. This is Noir Extreme. So this is another 10 ml travel atomizer. This is actually a perfect size for me when I don't need a full bottle, but I want to be able to wear the scent occasionally and talk about it. So I've been waiting for the um, weather to cool to wear this again because it's sweet. It is a sweet gourmand. And you know what? I don't like sweet fragrances, and I struggle with this one because it's very sweet. So I'm like torn in two. Half of me really enjoys it, and half of me is like, God, this is so sweet. But it has this note of uh, kulfi. Very unique smell. You've smelled this before, I bet. If you smell this, you will have said, okay, I've smelled someone who has worn this because it's a very popular fragrance. Um, vanilla, Sweet vanilla in the base. Uh, there's a big saffron note in the top. But that mastic kulfi mid is very, very unique. Um, it's, uh, it's a good cold weather scent, especially if you want something mass appealing. And then another early impression that's coming up very soon is a house that I haven't talked about much on my channel, but I will talk more about it, I promise, because I have decants like this I want to talk about. So this is the house of Matriarch. And this fragrance is called Bittersweet Symphony. And Bittersweet Symphony, all of these were done by Christy Michelle, I believe, who owns the house. So Bittersweet Symphony, and her whole shtick is, her fragrances are like 99% natural, okay? I think she uses just a little bit of 
just a little bit of synthetics to hold everything together, but most of what she uses are natural, and her fragrances are very expensive, but like once a year, twice a year, she has like a 50% off sale. That's when you buy. Do not buy her stuff at full retail. It's not worth it. Uh, it's good. And there's a, um, there's a henna note in the top of this, which is very... Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a ingredient that's very special to me because in the Arabic culture, you know, you'll, they'll do sometimes henna tattoos, but more importantly, uh, they will use henna as like a hair dyeing product. So I remember my mother, you know, as I was growing up, she would, uh, have this yogurt face mask, uh, and henna on the hair to keep it, you know, brown or whatever it is, um, instead of using the fake dyes. Henna is supposed to be a little bit more, um, supposed to be a little bit more friendly for your hair, let's say, less chemicals. And so I love the note of henna, and this is a very unique fragrance. I, um, I need to wear it soon as my scent of the day and talk about it, because there's so much going on. There's beautiful tea notes in here. It's smoky. There's like three or four types of tea in here. There's black tea, white tea, green tea, there's saffron, there's vervain, there's cacao, there's um, cystus, again, so it's a little bit resinous. It also has oud, and the smoke notes in here are charred. So it smells like you're smelling something very dark and, and black. And there's animalic notes. There's hyracium, which I have one of my favorite hyracium, hyrax fragrances coming up very soon. Uh, towards the end of the video, actually. But, um, yes, Bittersweet Symphony is very interesting. This is an interesting house. You know, I've got two full travel atomizers, and then I have maybe four or five of these um, smaller, deep, you know, samples, you would call them, I guess, that I want to talk about. So I will, I will talk more about the House of uh, Matriarch very soon. Okay, next, moving on. We're going to move on to some full bottles. So a couple fragrances that... I don't know how I feel about them. Okay, so the first is uh, Molinard's Patchouli. And the second is Molinard's Queer. Okay, so patchouli and leather in these purple bottles. And, you know, they are... Are they good scents? Yes, they are good scents, okay? Is this something I want to reach for, though? When, I, when I'm standing here looking at my collection, do I want to reach for Queer or Patchouli? Not really, because the patchouli has a similar problem that um, patchouli intense by the house of um, by the house of Nikolai has, and that the, and that's that there's a big overdose of geranium in here, and I think the geranium uh, tends to overtake the patchouli. It feels like it doesn't blend very well, and it and it feels very scratchy, and it feels cheap. Okay, which for, for Molinard, you don't expect. I mean, this is a house that has been around for a long time. Uh, and they have some quality products. And you can see, they're in Gross. They're in the heart of perfume-making country. Um, so it is good. I'm not saying it's bad, because I know it's good. I can tell it does have quality. But for some reason, when I want a patchouli, this is not what I reach for. But I will, I will make myself wear it and talk about it, of course. And actually, the very same thing can be said for queer. This is a very, um, how do I describe this? This leather is, um, the leather note in here, it, uh, yeah, it comes across as just very, um, very industrial and, and harsh, extremely harsh. Maybe it's the oud in the base, I don't know, but, um, it's, it's not, I'd rather, much rather wear Bellamy, Leonard Porom, the stuff I've talked about many a times on the channel. So again, I will wear it and talk about it, but I'm not too thrilled with those. And then we've got a Jacques Bogart, and another Jacques Bogart I'm not too thrilled with. Let's get the ones I don't really care for out of the way. This is Silver Scent Pure. Now, Silver Scent Pure is basically a citrusy orange blossom scent. And orange blossoms and neroli, historically are two notes that are a little hard for me to swallow, a little hard for me to digest, unless they're done very well. And I'll show you one coming later on that, that I think is done very well, that doesn't get the love that it deserves. Um, so this is grapefruit, orange blossom, and patchouli. And 
orange blossom can sometimes come across as smelling uh, very soapy. Orange blossom can give this soapy-like vibe. Same for neroli. And um, for, for whatever reason, Jacques Bogart has done so many fragrances so well. This one smells cheap to me. It smells cheap, and it smells very harsh and very synthetic. However, if you're the type of person who wants a fragrance to be beast mode, even in the summer, you want to wear a citrus scent, but you want it to last forever? Here's your answer. I mean, yes, this is harsh, and yes, it's synthetic. My God, man. I mean, this is a 12-hour ordeal of citruses, of orange blossom, grapefruit, patchouli. Um, I, it's, it's, if, if this is your thing, this, is, this could be kind of like a grail scent for you because it lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts. I'm going to do a This Is Not A Top 10 Soapy Fragrances one day, and I think this would make a list. Sometimes heavy citruses give me a soapy feel too, but that'll be an a idea for another video. And then we've got a discontinued Calvin Klein fragrance. And let me grab my... This bottle's a fingerprint magnet, by the way. The cap is too. Uh, so this is Calvin Klein Reveal for Men. So, Reveal for Women came out in 2014, and then in 2015, Reveal for Men came out. This is a triple threat perf perfumer creation. Olivier Guillotine, Rodrigo's Flores Rue, and May Pierre Julien created this, with help from Anne Gottlieb. Now, Anne Gottlieb is like a marketing genius, product developer genius in the fragrance game, if you will. This fragrance is very unique for a designer, but it's also very sweet. And when I bought this years ago, it taught me a very good lesson. And, you know, one of the people who I like to watch was, um, uh, oh man, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, um, the guy from Bangladesh. I forget his name. How could I forget his name? Um, anyways, Yes, I, you. someone's going to leave it in the comment. I'm going to slap myself. It'll probably come to me too here any any minute. Um, but there is a gentleman who has done a million videos, and I should know his name. I can't believe I forgot his name all of a sudden, but getting old. Uh, and he loved this. He really pounded the table on this, said this is a masterpiece. Get it now, it's discontinued, that kind of stuff. And I did get a very good deal on this. I didn't pay very much money. But when I got it and sprayed it, and I realized how fruity it is, this is like this pear brandy with agave, candied ginger, mastic, uh, vetiver, amber, tonka. It's very, very sweet. It smells like... It smells like if Calvin Klein tried to update you know, the, the, if they tried to kick, get, uh, lightning in a bottle again from the eighties with obsession in the late 2000, 2015 and update it for the modern market of people who like stuff like, um, Invictus joy, joy. I mean, is the guy joy. I mean, loves this stuff. And, um, I got it off of his recommendation and went, what the hell is this? And that's really where I think I learned that uh, you have to be selective on who you trust because the person that you trust, you have to know their taste. So he may think this is the greatest fragrance of all time. Fragrance is subjective, right? Um, but since I know he likes sweet fragrances now, I'm much less apt to buy on his recommendation versus someone like Rich Mitch. If Rich pounds the table on something, I'm going to try it because Rich and I's tastes are merged. Whereas with Joy... Me and him are on completely opposite ends of the spectrum. I like unsweet. He likes very sweet. This is very, very, very sweet. One day I'll torture myself and wear this for you guys and talk about it. But um, needless to say, I am not a fan of Reveal for Men. And then I, we're going to talk about a couple of Rosasi fragrances. Normally I don't talk about clones on the channel. But you know what? With prices doing what they're doing... And some of these houses just being outrageous. Some of these deserve credit. So I don't own any bottles of Invictus. Zero. Because I have this. This is Havas. If I ever want the DNA, the Invictus DNA, I could just wear this. It's um, 
that apple, pineapple, pear, fruity, cinnamony, fresh opening. Again, it has orange blossom, which gives this soapy. Uh, there's there's some soapy qualities to this here uh, with melon, plum, ambergris, patchouli, amber wood, cedar wood, sandalwood, and musk. I mean, it's fresh. It's mass appealing. You, If you're a compliment guy, this is probably your fragrance. Um, I'll spray it on before bed every now and then just to remind myself what it is and that kind of stuff. Maybe I'll, again, torture myself, wear it as my scent of the day and talk about it on a video. Now, here's a Rosasi that fits a little bit more my style. This is an insane fragrance, by the way, and it does deserve to be highlighted. And this is another one that uh, Joy Amin pounded the table on years ago. And in this case, it is still too sweet for me, but I see the under, I can see the gears turning underneath the sweetness where this makes more sense. This is called Rasasi's Shura Porom. Now, Shura is basically this, um, think about if you took an 80s floral, like for men, like imagine if you took a Kitos or Tenere by Paco Rabanne, okay? And you added some insane notes on the top and insane notes on the bottom. So the top has rose and tomato leaf, which there's very few tomato leaf fragrances I love. This is probably my favorite tomato leaf fragrance. It's called uh, What About Adam by Yop, and it is discontinued, unfortunately. But this is my go-to tomato leaf, and it's beautiful. And tomato leaves, um, they are very rarely used. And so when you smell a tomato leaf note in a fragrance, it smells very unique. It smells like something you haven't smelled before, which is a good thing. So there's freesia, tomato leaf, and rose in the top. Then you get more rose, sandalwood, cedarwood, and jasmine. Huge, vintage, old-school jasmine note. Floral. Very floral in the mid. And then, because of that rose-jasmine combo, and then you get a base of amber, musk, oak moss, oud, and leather. But, I mean, damn, for $38 or whatever I paid for this, I have to hand it to Versace. It's unique. It's um, taking a little bit of a chance going old school like that. But it does have that Versace, you know, Middle Eastern, little bit synthetic vibe. But uh, if you can get behind, if you can get past that, if that doesn't bother you, sure, uh, will interest you. It's an interesting fragrance. Again, I wish the sweetness was toned down, but it's good. Okay, now we're going to go to the House of Burberry, and this is not the original Brit Rhythm. This is Brit Rhythm Eau de Toilette Intense. So the Intense came out in 2015. Uh, the original came out in 2013, and I think it was a Dominique Ropion, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but this is Absinthe, Wormwood, Peppermint, Cumin, it's crazy to put a cumin note in a designer like this, but it, it's it's very toned down just a little bit. Patchouli, amber, and leather with guyac wood, tonka bean, and cashmere. This would smell great on a professional 20-something-year-old who just graduated college. That's the vibe that Brit Rhythm Intense gives me. Okay, next we're going to go to a tonka bean fragrance that I can't stand. Again, it's too sweet. It's a very sweet gourmand. Feb Delicios from 2015. Now, Feb Delicios is uh, vanilla, tonka, bergamot, and rose. But the problem is, is it, you know, I was given some tonka, ap tonka bean absolute by Russian Adam. And I've put it on skin. I put it on paper. I've smelled the real thing. The real thing smells nothing like this. It smells nothing like the sweetness of what you're smelling in these in, in Feb. You know, people think because of this fragrance that this is what tonka bean smells like. It doesn't. It doesn't smell like this at all. At least the, the, the tonka bean absolute that Russian Adam sent me. This is this doughy, you know, sweet um, whipped cream pie crust tonka. I, I'm not a fan. Uh, I'm much more a fan of the tonka that smells more like tobacco. Tonka usually adds a little bit of sweetness to tobacco. But I'm a fan of when Tonka is more almondy, more nutty, drier. 
okay? I don't like the sweetness so much. So that's, Fev is one that, you know, if I had to sell one, I, I certainly wouldn't mind selling this fragrance, but I don't sell my fragrances, but man, this is one that I really struggle with. And every time I spray it on at night, I'm like, oh God, what a nightmare. Why did I even, why did I torture myself? One day I'll really torture myself, make it my scent of the day and talk about it. All right. Next is Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb Extreme. And yes, I do like this. I think this is a good perfume. It's actually shown as the top 15. It's, it's the 15th most popular men's perfume right now in 2022. Crazy to think about uh, that Spice Bomb Extreme is still that popular. Uh, this is um, peppery, cinnamony tobacco with sweet vanilla and a little bit of labdanum is basically what this is, with some saffron. And it is a good designer tobacco. I do enjoy it. I wish the sweetness was toned down, uh, obviously. You're gonna hear me say that a lot when I talk about these designers, but it's good. I mean, it's, it's but tobacco is an easy sell for me. That's the thing, is tobacco is an easy sell along with leather. So again, just like I was saying, I take Joy Amin's recommendations with a grain of salt. When it comes to things like leather and tobacco, I'm going to talk highly of it because I that's what I like. Um, so keep that in the back of your mind. Still worth a sniff if you've never smelled that. Now here's a discontinued designer that the first time I smelled it, I hated it. Second time I smelled it, I hated it. Third time I smelled it, I hated it. And the fourth time I smelled it, I hated it just a little less. And I'm on about the fifth time right now. And it's slowly being hated just a little less each time. It's Gucci Intense Oud. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's something, some sort of strange combination with the fruitiness. Because the top has two fruit notes, pear and raspberry. And I think the pear and raspberry blend very strangely with the saffron. I think it's just a weird combination for my nose. And then it goes to orange blossom, which again, very strange to mix into a perfume like this, and rose. Rose makes sense because you get oud in the base. Um, you get oud in the base. Patchouli, amber, and musk as well. And the more I've forced myself to be sprayed, I'll spray this before bed occasionally. I haven't given it a full wear yet. I can't get up the courage to, but I will very soon. Um, it's it's slowly growing on me, but it's not the hype beast that I expected. You know, people like, if you go back and watch like old robes videos, Mark from Robes 08 from the, you know, 2015, 2016, when he bought this new, this was like his number one fragrance, I think on one of his winter lists. I was like, wow. Um, and I don't think it's that at all. I think maybe because it was new, he was a little bit enamored with it because he was wearing it. But I don't, I don't think it's that good of a fragrance. But now I've been, we've been spoiled since 2015 with brands like Aris Ladore, Bortnikov. We know what oud is now. Ensar, you know, back then this was oud. You know, this or M7, I guess, or Tom Ford oud wood. Okay. Next, we've got a Luban fragrance, and this is an interesting leather. It's not my favorite. Uh, I'd much rather wear, like I said, Bellamy, those kind of leathers I talk about all the time. But this is good. It's called Upper Ten. And Upper Ten is basically this creamy, you know, it feels like there's an orange line running through the middle of it. This orangey, peachy, creamy leather with spices, cinnamon, cardamom. You know, there's a little bit of patchouli in the base. There's a touch of saffron in the top. It is a strange fragrance because there's some freshness to it all. So you get this juniper uh, Italian bergamot top with orange blossom. Again, another fresh note. And it's a fresh leather. If I wanted to wear a leather in the heat, uh, this, this could be a, a challenger. This could be one to wear. This could be one to select to wear in the heat. You know, there's some tobaccos I say are good for the heat. Uh, this is kind of one of those leather fragrances that it's not as, uh, the leather note's not as heavy as some of the other leathers that I, I, I basically know and love. And if you haven't seen my top 100, if you want to know my taste, go watch that 
excuse me, that'll give you an idea of the fragrances I really love. Okay, next we're going to go to um, Spirit of Dubai. So in 2015, thanks, thanks to one of my perfume god parents for sending this to me, my perfume god people. Um, so in 2015, they put out a couple new scents, one of which is Dubai Oud. And if I was going to buy one from this first collection from Spirit of Dubai, I think that this Dubai Oud would be the, it would be the one. Um, this or Majalis. If you, by the way, I did videos on all of these because I was so uh, grateful to be given a sample set of such an expensive quality. I had to try them. And I put them right to the top of the list. I did videos on them. They're on my channel. You can search by house. If you go to playlist, Spirit of Dubai has its own playlist. You can watch them all. Oud is the very first one I smelled. And the problem this house had is when I smelled this, I said, okay, this is going to be good. Um, because this is a great fragrance. It's very similar to Frederick Mall's The Night. Um, earthy, spicy, woody oud, you know. Rotting oud, uh, flower bed oud, that fertilizer oud, barnyard oud, the stuff, I like that stuff. Earthy, very earthy. And um, there's a million notes in this, tobacco, ambergris, you know, Indian oud, um, rose, cedar wood, benzoin, patchouli, I mean, you can go on forever. Pepper, rose, frankincense, cypriol, osmanthus, then the listing's like this long. But um, the problem this house had is this oud, this quality of oud here is what I expected in all the other fragrances, and it's not. The other fragrances, the compositions, are not used with this quality oud. They lowered the quality of oud, in my opinion. It, to me, to my nose, to my nose, it doesn't smell as quality oud um, as the actual oud one. And so if I had to buy one from the first collection, I think it would be this oud one or Majalis. And then in 2015, uh, they put out a fragrance called Maidan. And Maidan's the green one. So Maidan is the leather one that I thought I would love. It's leathery and woody is, uh, is kind of the overreaching idea. Again, million notes. Um, apple, cardamom, saffron, almond, tobacco, frankincense. And it is good. I'm not saying it's bad when I... I just expected more. You know what I mean? Like, for a fragrance as expensive as Maidan is, I expected more. And I didn't get it. Uh, I was a little disappointed. It smells like there's a ton of synthetics in here. And uh, it just didn't, didn't hit my nose right. I did a full video on it. You can go check that out. Again, it's good. I'll wear it again. I'll wear this sample until it's gone. But I won't buy a bottle. Also in 2015 came Abraj. I think Abraj is the uh, silver one. So Abraj is, um, I think this is the one they talked about, like Dubai skyscrapers and, and stuff like that. But uh, again, I've got enough to give it another wear, so I will wear this again at some point. Spicy and fresh, kind of like, you know, a fresh oud. If you want a fresh oud, though, for my money, if I'm going to spend this kind of money... I would go to arigeladori.com and buy um, Ocularia Blossom if it's still available. That, that's my opinion. If you want a fresh oud, that's with his friend Taha from Agar Aura. And Taha does a very good fresh oud. So instead of giving, you know, Nabil your money, give it to Russian Adam, you'll get a better product in my opinion. Okay, so those are three from 2015 from the House of uh, Spirit of Dubai. And then we're going to go from one of the most expensive houses in Spirit of Dubai to one of the best value houses in Lalique. So Lalique has put out three Ancre Noirs. This is the final Ancre Noir uh, that they put out in 2015. It's called Ancre Noir Al Extreme. I love this stuff. I can't wait to wear it. In fact, I may wear it very soon. Um, this has been looking at me as summer has droned on, and, oh, Nathalie Larson, man, what a creation she made with the Ancre Noir series. This is Elemi with Cypress, which is such an underused note, 
vetiver. It's vetiver heaven. Vetiver, frankincense, benzoin, patchouli, and sandalwood. And it's just, it's got this iris note, which just smooths everything out. It's like, you know, it just, um, you know, I was at the car joint today because I had that engine uh, issue pop up on my way to work. And I, one of the, um, in the back, I could see them kind of working on someone's car, trying to get like a dent out. And they were like trying to smooth it out. Uh, and that's what the iris reminds me of. It reminds me of, you know, trying to, trying to blend the dent into the rest of the metal. You know, it's kind of like an art. Um, oh, man, this is so good. Perfect for winter. Absolutely perfect. Um, and then we've got Carolina Herrera, CH Men Privé. Now, CH Men Privé is another boozy designer, okay? Um, I know I mentioned Dark Rebel is a very good designer boozy fragrance. CH Men is one of the other very good boozy designer fragrances, if you will. And uh, it came out in 2015. Puig is marketing it. It's got that lavender, thyme, cardamom, masculine opening, and then whiskey. And it's so good. I love this stuff. I mean... I know that um, I know that this is somewhat popular. It's got that leathery dry down too. I even like CH Men, even though it's sweet leather. I, I like the way that Carolina Herrera does leather. I'd rather wear this than Maidon, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I'm a I'm a fan. I mean, if you want, and it looks like a flask. Great presentation. Um, CH Men Privé. And then we're going to go to the house of Guerlain, which this fragrance, uh, I had to kind of plant my flag somewhere and I planted it on the first year that it came out because every year they released a different bottle. And this is Abbey Rouge Dress Code. Now, so the, so the uh, first one came out in 2015. Then 2016, this is a 2017 bottle, 7T01 is the batch code. So it's a 2017. I don't know if they did a 2018 or discontinued it at 2017, but this is basically a flanker to Abbey Rouge with uh, a praline note in the base. So it's praline, leather, vanilla, tonka in the base with bergamot, neroli, rose, and spicy notes. So that Abbey Rouge leather comes out in the base. And I did an early impression on Oud Cole which is Guerlain's newest Oud fragrance. And I also did an unboxing on that Oud Cole fragrance. I probably should have done a separate unboxing video because it was an insane unboxing, okay? Um, there was some very rare stuff in there that I found from a fellow in Italy. But um, go watch my review of Abbey Rouge, or of uh, Guerlain's Oud Cole. I said it feels like an Oud version of Abbey, of Abbey Rouge dress code. And so I would rather wear this, to be honest with you. And even at the marked up aftermarket prices, you can still find bottles for less than $200 for 100 mil. That's way better than the 380 Guerlain's asking for uh, Oud Cole or whatever it is, 360. Um, so anyways, yes, Abbey Rouge Dress Code is, is a sweet fragrance I actually enjoy. Okay, now we're going to go to um, one of the most popular designers of all time. This is uh, Dolce & Gabbana The One, EDP. Okay, EDP, probably the best-selling Dolce & Gabbana of all time um, for men. It's uh, basil, grapefruit, coriander, ginger, cardamom, orange blossom, orange blossom again, amber, tobacco, and cedar. And it's that ambery tobacco in the base. You know, the color really highlights this. It gets a bad rep for not being uh, a performer. It only lasts four hours or whatever. Just respray it. I mean, it's a 100 mil bottle. You can find it at discounters for 50 bucks. Just respray the hell out of this and, and you'll have a good fragrance. And I think Olivier Polish created this. He doesn't make bad perfume. You know, he is... Um, uh, this, is a, this is known as kind of one of those snuggle scents, one of those date night scents, if you will. So continuing on in 2015, I told you there's a lot of 2015 perfumes. Uh, continuing on in 2015, we have Azaro Porom Intense. Now, Azaro Porom Intense is a flanker to Azaro Porom. Uh, this is created by Jacques Houclier, who did the uh, 
a men series for Thierry Mugler and Olivier Peschot. And they made a good modern flanker. Go figure. They made a good modern flanker. Um, this is the 100 mil bottle. And the reason that I like this is it feels like there is remnants of that old school Azaro Porom with that terrible chrome sticker on the front in here. You know, it feels like it's underneath it all just waiting to come out. But that liquor note, whatever liquor note they used, and Laotian cinnamon, Haitian vetiver, Venezuelan tonka, and amber. Uh, and again, it doesn't last very long. This is another four-hour fragrance, but four or five hours. But, you know, both of these, you can just spray away. They're cheap. I think I got this for 20 bucks or something on discounters. If you see Azaro Porum Intense, if you like the DNA of Azaro and want it updated, there you go. Um... Good cheapy, or it was. I don't know if it's still in production or not, but. Okay, next we're gonna go to Costume National, my only full bottle from the House of Costume National, and it is Soul. The reason Soul is my only full bottle of Costume National is because this is a very bright amber fragrance. Most amber fragrances are naturally down. They're naturally dragging you down, they're heavy. Um, Sometimes I really like that, like um, Ombre Sultan's a beautiful spicy amber, and here it's a very bright amber. It um, it's almost like sun. It's almost like it reflects the sunlight. You know, it's bergamot, cardamom, and pink pepper with geranium, leather, and oud, ambergris, vanilla, and patchouli. And the ambergris note in the base is damn um, convincing. You know, Dominique Ropion did this. I'm sure Costume National is not using real ambergris. I wouldn't think. Uh, I also wouldn't think they're using real oud at this price point, but maybe I'm wrong. And this is a good perfume. No one, no love. It gets almost no love. I enjoy it. Um, one of my favorite amber fragrances, believe it or not. I will, I will, um, I'll, I'll rank my, this is not a top 10 amber video one day. I'm going to go back and rank all of them. So far, I've only ranked a couple. Okay. Uh, I think I ranked the Olibanum, the incense one and the leather one. And that's it. Uh, I think I ranked the leather. Um, okay. Next is an amazing flanker. I think I like this more than the original. One of the few times I like the modern better than the original and this is Equipage Geranium by the house of Hermes and I love this presentation it is so classy it's perfect this is a perfect presentation look at the back too that's Equipage Geranium right there in a nutshell top hat riding jacket uh, um beautiful horse uh this is Three notes, geranium, sandalwood, and clove. And Jean-Claude Elena, man, I mean, he took that equipage DNA and modernized it. And the sandalwood in here is stunning. I don't know how he made a sandalwood note in 2015 so beautiful, but it it's, it's um, don't think because it's three notes, it's simple. This is not a simple perfume. This is extremely complex. Uh, Lots of nuances, but you have to pay attention. It's something you have to, almost when you're by yourself, spray it and really focus on it. You know, give it the attention it deserves. I'm going to turn the light on because it's getting a little dark. One moment. Don't leave me. I'm also going to take a quick sip, so give me one moment. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. Okay, next on the list, we have one of my favorite tobaccos of all time. And I haven't talked about this much because I've been waiting for winter to roll around. But this is um, Parfum d'Empire. And this is called Tabac Taboo. My God. Now, one thing I will say about this fragrance is every year is a different version, unfortunately. That's what I hear, okay? So if you look, it says Production Confidential 2017. So this is the 2017 version. And the reason they do that, I read about it, the brand says that some of the ingredients in here are 
um, very uh, price sensitive to changes in the marketplace. So every year they put it out and every year the price moves a little bit. So I don't know if there's differences though. Like if you buy Tabak Tabu that came out in 2020, is it going to be as good as the one I have? Is there? Di I've never done comparisons, but I will tell you that um, this is an X-ray, okay? This is an X-ray to Parfum. Uh, it's thick. It's, you know, this is fall in a bottle. It's hay. It's hay-like. Uh, it's got. It's got this beautiful Narcissus, this yellow Narcissus Accord, uh, Immortel, um, crunchy. You know, walking through uh, grass that's dying in the in the fall, not dead, but dying. And uh, honey, wild grass, and the skin like a cord. I mean, it smells like a it smells like a beautiful fall day uh, at the pumpkin patch. It's it's fantastic, uh, amazing tobacco. And then we've got the neroli that I love that I think gets. Uh, not enough love in the community, even just in the mod. You, there, you don't have to worry about versions either. Just go buy what's on the shelf. Uh, it's marketed by Inter Parfums. They do good. They do a good job. And this is uh, Dunhill's Icon, the original Dunhill Icon. This is one of my favorite Neroli Petit Gras, which Petit Gras I believe is like the bitter leaves on the orange tree. Um, so this has this. Stunning Neroli note. And if you... So, this is the reason I never bought Terre Hermes. Okay? Some of you might think that's crazy. But to me, Terre Hermes and Icon share that, you know, vetiver with citruses. Uh, Terre Hermes used that grapefruit with that dirty orange. And Icon used the Neroli with bergamot... Petit Gran, and the spices are cardamom sage, there's a freshness of juniper, there's a uh, traditional lavender, there's iris and oud and vetiver, leather and oak moss in the base. I think that this is amazing. One, This is one of my favorite um, Neroli scents. Neroli is a very expensive material to use, by the way, especially if you're using high quality Neroli. They're using Neroli Absolute here, which is not cheap, I'm sure. And I got a vintage bottle. If you go watch that Oud Cole video, you'll, one of the bottles I unboxed from Italy is a vintage bottle of Jacques Fat, Jacques Fat Green Water, which is known in history as being the most um, heaviest concentration of Neroli ever, basically, for, for I think for a fragrance, maybe for a man's fragrance, maybe just for a fragrance in general. And... This is just as good to me. I wore it to bed. I wore green water to bed the other night. And I mean, it's good, but this is just as good. Uh, but I wanted it as a reference, you know? Okay, now here's a fragrance no one talks about. No one. And it deserves much love. It's from uh, Anique Minardo, the great Anique Minardo. It's Lolita Lempica Au Masculin Eau de Parfum Intense. Okay? Discontinued, unfortunately. But uh, the Eau de Parfum Intense is absolutely stunning. This is um, anise with oud, myrrh, iris, and vetiver is basically what it is. And the anise note in the top is one of the best I've ever smelled. The iris note in here is absolutely amazing. It's beautiful. It smells so high class. And yet, you know, I think I got this bottle for 100 bucks. maybe. It was a tester. As you can see, tester. But um, it did come with a cap. But man, I mean, if you stumble across this in the wild and, and you can find it for 100 bucks or under, it's worth it. It is worth it. Beautiful release. Especially if you like the original. And this is, this is a proper flanker because it does keep some of the original... Um, uh, the anise top that um, the original Eau Masculin had is here beautiful. Okay, now to my favorite Hyrax fragrance of all time, and one of my favorite animalic fragrances of all time, uh, from the House of Papillon in 2015, this is Salome. My God, Salome is a pure and utter love. I go back and forth between this 
and um oh jesus uh, salome um it, it, between this and anubis is for me you know that's the toss up with the house which one's my favorite? I go back and forth. But the best Hyrax note I've ever smelled. If you like stuff like Bala Versailles Parfum, if you've ever smelled a vintage version of, of Bala Versailles, did a video on that. You can check that out. This is just stunning. Animalic, spicy. Um, the jasmine in here is beautiful. The rose is beautiful. It's just, in a, I mean, it's a, the way that Liz Moores describes this, it's a post uh, coit, a post, uh, coitus fragrance. Okay. Post coital. Uh, I don't know how she says she, you know, with that English accent, everything she says just sounds like so proper. Um, but it's basically a post sex fragrance and sex on the skin is how she describes Salome. And I love it. I absolutely adore this. It is so good. It is so good. More, and, you know, I know this gets a little bit of love, but this deserves to get a hell of a lot more love. This brand, in general, um, she did a, She was kind enough to do an interview with me, and I, I walked away even more impressed than, you know, before I, the interview. She is... Um, she, one thing that she does so well is she holds the ability of ignoring what everyone else says or does, right? Like when I told her how expensive one of the roses was, she was like, holy moly, like she had no clue, right? She just does her own thing, stays in her own lane, blocks everything out, um, and puts out amazing, every single one of her fragrances is full bottle worthy. I don't have full bottles, but every single one of them is full bottle worthy. Okay, now we're going to go to the house of Histoire de Parfum. Again, I, I told you 2015 is a hell of a year. Uh, this is Rare Fidelis. Okay, so this is a 15 mil Rare Fidelis bottle. Looks like this, basically. And here's the little 15 mil. I love that the house does these 15 mils. Rare Fidelis is a Julian Rasconet. If you like stuff like the moon, I would highly urge you to try rare fidelis i love this stuff it is so good it's got cumin i love the coffee note in here the coffee note just is perfect it's a perfect coffee note with saffron rose raspberry patchouli amber and laoche and oud now if you're the type of person who uh just cannot deal with amber woods at all stay away okay but if you're like me and you can stomach the amber woods, they don't bother you. Um, this is amazing. I, I, the longevity on this is insane. It's an all day affair. It changes. The Laotian oud in the base smells real. I don't know if they use real oud, but it smells real. Um, the coffee note is one of the best coffee notes I've smelled. Full bottle worthy. Even though I only have a 15 mil, it's full bottle worthy. Okay, one of my favorite rose fragrances, one of my favorite Taif rose fragrances, till of course I smelled Russian Adams Malik Al Taif, which blew this out of the water, but that's impossible to find. Um, this is Rose de Taif, de Taif Extra. Rose de Taif Extra. And so not the original, the original Paris Monte Carlo Rose de Taif came out in 2013. That sucks, okay? You don't want that. What you want is the extra version. It's so lemony and floral. There's some spices from the nutmeg. Nutmeg just keeps everything rounded. You know, it keeps everything in its place. Nutmeg is like the uh, wolf dog, or the uh, sheep dog. Goes around and keeps all the sheep in the pen. Nutmeg keeps everything in its, in its, in its place. Lemon, taif rose, Geranium, Damask Rose, Absolute, and Musk. And Taif Rose is one of my favorite roses, if not my favorite, and it's done so well here. This is so posh. So posh. To me. I'm a big fan. Um, I'm sure there's some synthetics here as well, of course, but uh, the extra is amazing. Okay, now we're going to go to the House of Amouage, and one that I would like a full bottle of, although I must admit Silver Oud is the one that's on my 
number one full bottle list. Uh, Amwage, if you're watching and you're doing free bottles, send one my way, buddy. I'll uh, I'll make sure to say nice things about it. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, Silver Oud is my number one Amwage to buy right now. But uh, this is also full bottle worthy. It's from the same collection, Opus. This is Opus 9. So Opus 9 is a creation by two amazing perfumers, Pierre Nagrin and Nathalie Lorson. And um, they created Opus 9 as a representation of the camellia flower, which is a flower that has no smell. Okay, so imagine what the camellia flower could smell like, but it has no smell. It's um, animalic flor. Oh, God. Oh, this is so good. Jasmine, pepper, that, you know, Nathalie Lorson's DNA is all over this. Uh, her signature, if you will, with that black pepper top, that peppery top she loves to do is done here to perfection with leather and beeswax. Gayak wood, vetiver, ambergris, and civet. It smells like a party. It smells like you're um, walking into Studio 50, what is it, Studio 53, 58? Hell, I don't even remember, but the big studio uh, from back in New York City. Um, it, it literally smells like a, like a major party. And then, uh, one of my favorite... Um, boozy, one of my favorite lavender fragrances, one of my favorite Immortel fragrances, so many, one of my favorites, uh, it's Sunshine Man from 2015. What a release this was. My God, Sunshine Man is, um, it's, it's, it's the reason I don't own a full bottle of, uh, Dior's, um, God, I can't remember anything today. Which one is it? Dior's uh, Eau Noir. Sorry, Eau Noir. It's the reason I don't own a full bottle of Eau Noir because I think that Sunshine Man is Eau Noir perfected, in my opinion. And look at the dent. That's my dent. Uh, I love this stuff. Lavender, orange brandy, everlasting flower, which is immortelle. Bergamot, clary sage, juniper, tonka, vanilla, and cedarwood. Um, just one of my, probably my favorite immortel. Probably. Fabrice Pelligran and Pierre Negrin created this. And, I mean, it takes what, it takes what Eau Noir started with Francis Kirk John's Eau Noir and it perfects it to me. This is a 10 out of 10 out of 10. This is a perfect fragrance for me. Uh, one of my favorite amouages. I love the house, but one of my favorites. Okay, now we're going to go to, we're going to finish this out with the House of Roja because he has a bunch of fragrances on here that we're going to talk about from 2015. So one is in the Discovery set that one of you was kind enough to send me. So there's an early impression of this coming soon. And this is a sweet gourmand fragrance called Sweetie Oud. Now, Sweetie Oud is, um, you know, Roja's take on a gourmand oud. So imagine you're walking by a bakery and they're baking like fresh croissants or, um, you know, uh, that, that fresh bread, rising yeast feel. It's here. There's sweetness. Uh, and there's oud, amiris, which we'll talk more about amiris here in a minute. Cardamom, Cipriol, Cumin, Cystis, but it really does give this sweetness to it. And um, we'll, I'll do an early impression on it very soon. Okay, next, next Roja. And I see we're just over the hour mark, so I better get moving. We've got uh, Roja's 51 Porom. Now, this is a very interesting fragrance. It's a leathery animalic rose. And if you like... If you like Imitation Man by Amouage, if you like Eugene's La Douleur Exquise, this is kind of in the same ballpark, if you will. They're all different. This is discontinued, by the way. Um, but yes, it's in that it's in that animalic ballpark. But instead of using 
uh, castorium, like uh, Eugene's that La Douleur Exquise does. This uses oud uh, and, and bread and stuff like that, but um, it's still a good fragrance. I enjoy it. I wouldn't buy a bottle because I did buy a bottle, a full bottle of Eugene's fragrance, and that scratches this itch perfectly, but I will do a video on this. Again, they are different, but I think they're in that same category. And then we've got Roja's take on a fougere, in my opinion, uh, with oud. So this is H, the exclusive parfum, Poron. Now, this is discontinued. Um, it's a woody, fruity, oudy fougere is basically what it is. Uh, it feels like a fougere. I don't think it's technically a fougere, um, but it feels like you know, something along the lines of, um, uh, it feels like something along the lines of a fougere with maybe some fruit mixed in, maybe like the plum from Plum Japanese, uh, Tom Ford's Plum Japanese mixed in, that kind of feel, you know, but with a fougere spine. And it's very professional, so it'd be great for the office. I would never buy a full bottle of this. But uh, I'm glad to have the decan so I can talk about it or the travel atomizer. And then we've got all Parfum de la Nuit series. So Parfum de la Nuit is Roja's idea of Parfum, uh, people of the night that you meet in Parfum version. What would they smell like? So uh, the first person, which let me just pull it up on the Roja website so I can tell you what... Um, which, by the way, they're doing Apex Parfum already. Uh, Apex just came out. What are they doing? Um, let's see. How do I find the Parfum de la Nuit? Let me read you this little blurb here. Okay. So here's what it says about number one. Inspired by the art of seduction that happens as the sun goes down, the Parfum de la Nuit collection offers three distinct scents. Number one, the Predator, is a big, bold, but never brash fragrance, which announces itself with confidence. This unapologetically sensual composition grabs attention as the dry warmth of spices and woods linger under the shadows of the distinctly leathery tones of labdanum and cistus, whose honeyed efforts uh, effect is heightened by prominent notes of vanilla and tonka. Okay. So, I do like this, number one. It's uh, listed as desire calls when darkness falls. It is good. I'm not going to say it's not good. I don't know if I would buy a bottle of it because I did buy a bottle of my favorite, which is coming up very soon. Uh, but number one is good. Um, you'll notice there are some similarities with many of them, by the way. The way that the note tree looks is very similar construction, and then there's some changes here and there. Number two is right here, Parfums de la Nuit, number two. And number two says, what does number two say? Number two says, desire when darkness falls. Is that the same thing? Um, number two, the seducer is a soft and indulgent scent which unfurls from the skin like a cat slinking out of the shadows. This leathery and intoxicating composition sinks the wearer into the comfort of a private member's club and slips a glass of rum garnished with orange rind into their hand as the velvety sweetness of benzoin, cacao, and vanilla pour chocolatey richness over the whole experience. So it is boozy. It's basically Roja's use of um, rum. I think it's the only time he uses rum, you know, because his main uh, boozy hit is with, um, it's not with rum, it's with cognac. And uh, that's creation E. And then number three, which is my scent of the day. Um, so number three is the one, let me, let me give myself a fresh spray because I do love this stuff. Um, Hey, big old box falling. I'm messing up the Lacord box, me lord. Okay, I do love this stuff, and and you know what? I don't I don't wear it all the time, so when I do, I like to enjoy it. Yeah. Okay, so number three says, 
It's my favorite of the three, in case you haven't noticed. Uh, it says inspire. Okay, let's go straight to the Exorcist. Is an otherworldly creation when, which enchants the senses. This incredibly dry and leathery composition blends the seduction of leather and labdanum, with the woody balsamic warmth of amiris. An elegant note of the world's finest rose lends a sweet lift to a pre to a precious spice note of saffron, which takes the whole creation to exotic lands. Okay, amiris. Um, by the way, Amiris is a very interesting note because Amiris is a genus of plants from the citrus family. Citrus. Some Amiris species exude elemi resin. Very interesting. Um, and there's this green Artemisia old school top with cumin. And that opening that I just got when I just sprayed is, to me, okay, to me, I don't see many people agreeing with me here. I even told it to Euro Rose, and I think he kind of looked at me like I was crazy through I instant message, but um, this is reminds me of Eau de Hermes opening. It reminds me of a updated Eau de Hermes rose it up, and I love Eau de Hermes. The cumin here is very prominent. And it does smell very high class. It's beautiful. I love this fragrance. Um, I never thought I'd have a bottle at such a great price. Uh, D.L. Qualia gave me an amazing deal. Thank you, my friend. Really, honestly, thank you for that. Um, so number three is my scent of the day. This whole series is from 2015, by the way. And finally, we saved, uh, we saved the final Roja for last. And I don't know which one it is, so I'm going to have to fumble around. Let's see, is it this one? Nope, it's not. It's not. It is this one. So the final Roja on the list uh, from 2015, and one of my favorite Rojas of all time, is Great Britain. Now, Great Britain... Uh, if you've never smelled Great Britain, it is Roja's take on a um, Russian leather. And it's Roja's take on a Russian leather. And it's damn good. Oh, The only fragrance that can compete with Diaghilev as my favorite Roja is this. I think Diaghilev is still my favorite, but damn, this is so good. Uh, if you like fragrances like Dior's Queer Canage, <laughs> this is Queer Canage with even higher quality iris, higher quality. It really does feel like a very high quality uh, scent. Feels like there is real ambergris. Um, it's an amazing creation. Great Britain's the final one from 2015. So, appreciate you watching. Sorry this went an hour and 13 minutes. Um, 2013 was a long episode. If you have favorites from this video, I'd love to hear them in the comments. If you have favorites that I didn't mention from 2015, I'd love to hear them in the comments. Or if you just want to drop in and say hi, I love seeing your faces in the comments. I love the interaction. Um, you know, all that stuff. Thank you to everybody who subscribed, liked, commented, all that good stuff. Uh, it is very much appreciated. I know you don't have to do that. And thank you to everyone who has supported me even, you know, uh, through everything that we've been through over the last year. It's been an amazing ride and a journey. I love doing this with you guys. Love talking about fragrance in general. Wish it, wish it paid me enough where I could make this my full-time job, but uh, it is what it is. It'll be a hobby. Uh, it'll be a it'll fun hobby for me on the side. So thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Hope to see you in the comments below. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching this, uh, this Year in Perfume 2015 episode. Bye-bye.